forward here and start sharing the screen. And whoops, there we go. And are you able to see the uh, paintings? Yep. Yep. All right, cool. Um, all right, so um, the lay-in is really solid. Um, the lay-in is every value is where it should be. Every um, the shapes feel good. And I think like there's some lessons where there's like a course correction, like, okay, this, this one, right, this one wrong, that type of thing. Mm -hmm. um, I really don't think that that's, that is this lesson because you worked out so many of your problems right here, which is very wise. Okay. And because you worked out so many of those problems um, over here, you're not really going to have trouble over here in the sense of drawing shapes anything like that. Um, really, I think uh, today's lesson can be more about what's next. Um, and to that extent, I just wanted to hear you talk about the painting for a little bit and then let me know what your thoughts are and then I can gauge, you know, um, my thoughts for like what's next. Sure, yeah. So, so I don't know if you remember the previous setup, but this is slightly different in that I, um, if instead of having all the objects there separately, I I moved the black bottle behind the um, the silver can because I felt that contrast would be uh, interesting. You know, instead of having them all sit there sort of separately. Besides, it looks it looks more a little bit more natural to me. Yeah. Uh, so that's 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 one one reason why I changed it. And then I played around a little bit with the positioning. Um, I, 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 I was fairly, fairly pleased with, with the way it, it the, the, the colors turn out. I, what, one area, well, I didn't, if, if you notice, I didn't draw in any shadows on the wall because I didn't, on, on, on the back, you know, I drew, I drew in some tentative shadows, uh, on the, on the, on the horizontal surface, but not on the back vertical surface. Yeah, um, because I'm I'm I've, I've got to I've, I've got to fix the lighting in a certain way so it's so that it's consistent. You know what I'm saying? So I get the same shadows sure. every time. And then um, the the um, the 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 runner on the table and the the cloth beneath it. Uh, what do you think about that? You know, one thing I want to ask you was about the gray, <laughs> that gray color. Um, I wanted obviously to contrast with the runner. I don't know if that's the, that's the, 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 the best uh, color there. So that, 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 that was some of it. But I guess my, my questions definitely are if you, if you feel that there's no, no correction needed is like how, how to, um, you know, how to best proceed from here to, um, well, to get into the more detailed things. So I, I started watching you. Well, I, you know, I, I did, I follow your recommendations about um, looking again in, de in detail at your first two days when you did your still life. Yeah. With the, with the kettle and the, and the milk and, and so forth. And that, that definitely helped me to, uh, definitely helped me to, to think about, you know, what, what, what to do here. And, and I, I, I guess my, my drawing may still have been more, more elaborate, but that's just, I, I just feel like I, I want to get the drawing right because once the paint is down, it's, it's, it's more difficult to change. So my drawing may still be more elaborate than, than probably you would, you would do, but, but um, uh, I, I think it, it worked out well. I wasn't afraid to put on, you know, to put in all the colors and the, uh, the way I saw it, without without worrying about getting the exact shapes and 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 sticking to the exact boundaries and so forth. So, and, yeah. and the overall, I was I was, ple I, was ple I was I was kind of worried while I was doing it, but I was pleased with the overall effect. So, yeah. um, so 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 uh, yeah, that's 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 basically where where I'm at. Um, so, so you know, uh, obviously I didn't put in many of the details like on the box and the label, but I, this wasn't the stage to do it in, I figured. So, um, 
Yeah. So, oh, oh, I, you know, I, I did have one question before we discussed the painting itself. I noticed that the can that I had this canvas. Um, I've had it for a while, so it's a pretty good linen canvas. But um, yeah, it looks. I it. noticed it, it was a little. It seemed a little loose to me, and so it had. It did come with these pegs that you can put. You know, these little wedges you can put between the um, perfect the corners to to tighten it. And I did that, and it def definitely tightened up. But most of my painting has been on on uh, like linen board. Uh, this one is a, is. is is obviously an actual canvas. So yep. how how tight does the canvas have to be? There's still there's still like in the center. I mean it's an 18 by 24 inch canvas. The center still has has a fair amount of give in it. And and the reason I the reason I bring that up is because I notice if I draw like a straight line and stuff, I have to be careful. Otherwise, the deflection of the canvas will sure. kind of screw yeah. up that line. Sure. Um, well, okay. So. Starting, starting there and working backwards, um, the it looks like a beautiful uh, linen canvas. I was actually struck by it. Like I was like, oh, that's that looks like nice linen. Um, so you have a nice surface to work on. Um, that's really great because we're going to be able to pull a lot out of that. Um, the the thing that I would say about the looseness, um, definitely that happens with time. It's not even a slight problem. And what mm -hmm. I would do if I were you is to. Uh, so you said you put the keys in. Um, yeah, the keys. Did, okay, keys. Yeah. Yeah. Can you, I, can I when put you, more in? I guess is the question. When you put them in, did you put them in um, flush to the side, or do they kind of like stick out like at like almost like at a, like a thirty degree angle? Um, like yeah, almost. They, they, they 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 stick out because I I was looking at a I was looking I looked up on YouTube uh you know how to how to tighten and and there was one video that that claimed you know most people do it incorrectly and yeah it most people this, do yeah yeah it was a 30 degree angle so i so i, I think cool. I, I got that yeah yeah so i would just um smash harder and you know you could crack the stretcher bars and i've mm -hmm. done that plenty of times and if you crack the stretcher bars to be perfectly honest it, like life goes on it says the painting doesn't fall apart it's fine um, so I'll, uh, I'm on a pr pretty regular basis, do a hairline split. I'll be like, Oh, I, I, I knocked it too hard. Um, it just doesn't matter. It's, it'll okay. never 200 years go anywhere if it has a hairline fracture. So I just keep tapping at it. Um, and you want to just tap, 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 turn the canvas, tap, 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 turn the canvas. You can get it pretty tight that way. And then what you can do the final stage is you've done that the max that you can then you can get a laundry sprayer, um, like a water sprayer. Um, uh -huh. And you can fill that with, bring water to a boil and then let it cool for maybe a minute or two. So it's like, you don't really want to put boiling water into plastic that's not rated for 212. Um, so bring it down to like 200 degrees. You, you know, you don't have to stick a thermometer in it, just hot. No, I understand. And then yeah, 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 yeah. just mist the back of it. Um, uh -huh. you could, you could douse it. I mean, linen, when it's created, uh, linen in Northern Ireland used to be redded, you know, that is rotted, but redded in the fields and the bogs and mm -hmm. it did it no harm. Like linen is an organic material that dialogues with water. Like it, it's okay to get it wet, even though there's paint on the other side, it doesn't matter at all. Um, so I, I give it like, you know, you don't want it soaking wet. You don't want it like bone dry you you want it somewhere like right in the middle and then the hot water sizes the linen in the sense that um it causes the linen like if there's something the size of the palm of your hand um hit it with hot enough water strong enough you know enough water hot enough water and it'll take something the size of the palm of your hand and it'll make it maybe four-fifths the size of the palm of your hand like it really constricts it it'll, it'll shrink um, basically what you're saying Yep. Yeah, it's shrinking it. Yep. Okay. The fibers okay. somehow contract after that hot water goes into it, and then it dries a little bit. And I've had canvases that were really loose, and then like I do that, and like maybe an hour later, it's like you could play play it like it's a goatskin drum. You can get like a nice Irish tune out of that, like a oh, wow. Yeah, that's, that's okay. yeah. Okay. 
So that works so. with that, that works with with women. I mean, I know that like if you wash your cotton t-shirts or something, you definitely in hot water they definitely shrink. But you're saying works with works with linen, with linen as well. That's good to know. Okay. Yeah, totally. It um like the it doesn't work it, ironically because yeah, cotton totally shrinks. But ironically, cotton when you do the same thing, barely responds. It must be how it's processed. Um, mm -hmm. You know, they, they different weave for different purposes, but cotton doesn't really respond in the canvas form. Mm -hmm. um, but linen like really contracts. Like, in fact, I'm adding a new chemical to it now. Um, but when you put uh, rabbit skin glue in, you heat it, you heat heat the water up, then you make the glue when it's sub boiling temperature. It can't boil. Um, when you put that on, um, if you put it on really hot, and um, the canvas is already like somewhat tight not too tight and you put it on really hot um one time i did that i stepped out of the studio to make coffee or something like that i'm like just 20 feet away and it sounded like somebody walked into my studio with a bat and just went crack and smashed something and i ran in i was like what the heck was that and the canvas was on the ground and john it looked like it got run over by a tractor trailer because the linen tightened so much that it snapped the stretcher bars <laughs> really Wow. Yes, yeah, them. It actually full on. They just cracked, and it, wow. it was at the joints. But all the joints, all four of them, just went pop, 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 mm -hmm. and that was that. That was done. I uh, <laughs> couldn't reuse that, but um, it just gives you an idea of how much linen can contract. Um, so I think that will help you. Um, it's not always because linen is again like can be processed differently. The oil primer can be different um so sometimes they even can spray like, spray like a fixative on the back I've, I've heard of people doing that i've never seen it so maybe it's i think it's going to work but it might be sealed a little bit so it doesn't work as well but um i think it'll work i rarely have done that and not had it work very well all right um so then going going back to a few things like your decision yeah. to um to pop uh with contrast and just merging all the layers down um, to pop with contrast um, was a great decision. That's a really great decision. Um, I actually didn't remember it um, being a different uh, bottle. And I think I, I liked the decision so much that what I was going to say was um, I would run with it. I'd actually run with it further uh, because sometimes they, you have a good idea and it's like, um, Hey, this is a good idea. And now let's make it even, let's, embrace it even more so um so the, bottle, I, the bottle a little wider huh yeah like i uh there's a specific brand of wine i think it's called turley t-u-r-l-e-y i'm not okay. saying going out to get it but um a friend of mine who's an art collector he uh used to drink turley and he'd give me his empty bottles for the studio um <laughs> because they were shaped like this and they just had this nice okay. Okay. kind of like uh bell like shape to them it was, yeah, it was, yeah 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 somewhat unique i mean i've seen other bottles like it but um yes like that, that also yeah yeah and it's like that overlaps that area even more because you again you hit on a great a great idea mm -hmm. and then what i would probably do is why not i would go even a little bit wider with this guy give him like a little bit more because like i actually think it does have a bit more girth to it okay. um and when i when i paint i am doing this constantly where I, I give things more heft if they need it. And, you know, sometimes, not always, but sometimes um, I can find it in nature um, in that, like, you know, like the thing actually is that way. But then other times I'm just telling a flat out lie. Like, yeah. and it, 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 when I first started to do that in paint, um, I almost felt like I was going to get caught by like the painting police. Um, <laughs> like, I was breaking like some law. And then like, you go along and you just realize all these artists they were drawing upon what they saw but they weren't enslaved to it like it goes back to that whole idea of like we're we're composers we're not documentarians mm. and if you're a documentarian and you go in let, let's say like something silly like right now okay you're a documentarian and you're somehow chronicling the war in south sudan and you go in and you insert yourself into it because you have your agenda and you make it as if there was no war. It was just totally falsified. 
that would be, we would say that's bad. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like you're in trouble. Um, but it's like, if you're a composer and you're creating a story and you have a work of fiction, like you can do whatever the heck you want. Like we're, that's what we're working with. We're working with, we're composers and we're doing works of fiction. But if they go so far into the fiction, they become fantasy. And to yeah. be perfectly honest, I don't teach fantasy, not because I hate it. Uh, it's just not in my blood. It's not really what I do. But um, you're not doing fantasy here either. One of my students right now is doing fantasy. She's actually doing a surrealist painting with me. <laughs> oh, really? Interesting. Yeah. Um, and she's doing a fantastic job. It's super, super fun. But it's so false that it's in the realm of the surreal. It's a surrealist painting. And it's really cool. So, so you're not like, doing like, like a Dali type of painting or <laughs> um it's kind of like um yeah kind of like Dali yeah definitely um is she's she's drawing from like surrealist influences uh with contemporary Spanish painters Con contemporary meaning like like 80s 90s uh that I crowd see. um I, I wasn't even aware of this group of painters and she pulls up these awesome images and she's like she's doing a fun painting so again like that's composing and stretching it so far that it's a new genre. Um, but it's like, it, it, the reason why I'm dwelling on this so much is because it was a big sticking point for me in my own work mm. where I, I felt for a long time, like enslaved to capture like absolute fidelity to the thing that I was painting. The real, the real thing. Yeah. 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 I, I, I can see, I, I, I can see where, where, Definitely some, some, some changes. I mean, after all, you know, a photograph is the most real thing. So, so if, mm -hmm. if that's the only thing you're going to do, then, then yep, why? Exactly. Well, so, and, and as a matter of fact, I'm looking now at what you just did was that, was that more bell shaped bottle. And, and I like it. I mean, it, it I, looking at, at the, the actual photograph of the, of the, of the setup and, and, you know, what you just did to the, um, to my to my lay-in, I, I I like I can tell right away I, I like the shape better with that bell shape than with the the actual bottle. So that's, that's, that's great. Yeah, cool. I mean, I I'm looking at it and I <laughs> I don't mind saying like I like it better too. And I'm always um I was joking around with Tony and we had a really fun text volley back and forth like maybe a month ago, but she was setting up her still life and she was having a hard time. And I said, um, okay, Tony, and um, I'm going to, you know what, I'm going to pull up the text because it's, it's hilarious. It's actually like a really funny um, back and forth. And when I spoke to her in person after the text, uh, the two of us were laughing like really hard. Um, so here, here's what I wrote with, here's what I wrote to her when she was trying to figure out um, how pieces dialogue with each other. Um, I, it's just pulling up it's the internet is just slow this morning it's just so slow it's weird yeah you know, it, that's what it seemed like to me too when i was trying to connect to you to, to our meeting yeah, yeah it's, it's been bizarre like it's been all morning for me i was trying to get work done mm. uh, earlier um okay so here it is so here's what i wrote to tony and bear with my flights of light-hearted poetic metaphor for a moment imagine still life objects uh in a still life as being people in an elevator. Generally speaking, we all give each other a bit of space, but a husband and wife will stand a little closer. A very old woman will have a young attendant clutching her arm in sport. Nobody goes near the scary guy. <laughs> um, cute girl on the phone is blissfully alone in the corner texting her boyfriend. Still life objects are the same. Glass milk, uh, like a glass milk jar, and paper bag flour have been married for years and they comfortably stand nearby each other but glass milk will never go near s the scary cast iron guy it's scared of shattering they give each other space perfect formed egg is quite content to be alone but not so alone that it becomes close to scary guy cast iron <laughs> <laughs> they all space themselves accordingly in your still life the plain and piece of raw wood are a match made in heaven partners whereas the level is the nerdy square that wants his space, the pieces dialogue with each other and tell you the space they require. Um, so like, I, we were just like laughing about that, but it's like, I mean, that's, that's what you did. You, you did that completely on your own accord right here. Um, 
and that's that's kind of what what's fun as as you're advancing you're really moving beyond craft concerns drawing concerns and now you're getting more into poetry it's like the poetic like i don't mind saying like the poetic metaphor of like you know, like we're, these guys like each other and so you you brought them together you know what i mean and the one heightens the other where the really the really dark dark right here pops the bright highlight right there yes and that so, was that was part of my 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 reason for doing that of course yeah yeah that's i really yeah. thought that was and it's, it's and, just and, you know, after, very after, successful. after i did it after, after i started drawing i i i mean after i laid in the paint actually i said to myself gee i, I wish i would have overlapped them more but your solution here is perfect so i really like that because the bottle shape change helps helps as well and it, and it causes more overlap yeah that's great yeah and it's it's like it, and it it's when I, I i can tell you the first painting i did that on um you know the painting of the violin and the well you know what uh, let, let me pull up the painting we, we we've looked at this before but i just want to show you um mm -hmm. i have an, a i have a, a meeting with uh lewis and i'm gonna bump him forward by a half an hour um, let me just, I'm just texting him as I talk to you. Okay. He's already told me the past. Yeah. Uh, tell you what, can you give me a minute? My, my, my wife wanted to ask me something. Can I, I'll be, I mean, oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, go, go for it. Okay. I'll, I'm going to pull up the image. Go for it. Okay. Okay, I'm back. <laughs> Great. Um, I'm just uh, quickly going to pull up this album. Um, let me see. I'm looking for a picture of Soroya. Um, so here it is. Um, so let me just expand the canvas a little bit. And I'm gonna show you how I lied in this piece where um, I was working on this piece. And as I recall, um, I was actually teaching while I began the piece. And so the, the, top, the top of the bottle um just poked its head above the violin like this mm -hmm. like i mean just barely so it was like I see. I see. It, was, yeah. it was like that and uh -huh. maybe even maybe even if i remember correctly it was like that and so um i'm looking at it i'm like well that's the height of the wine bottle and i was taught to you know fidelity to nature like you know observe nature and i was really having this like like crisis moment as nerdy painters will occasionally have um, where it's like, you think the world is coming to an end because you have to, um, 
you know, adjust something you've been taught. So like, that's how it looked. And that, that's awful. That looks like in a family, family photo, when you put the short person behind the tall people, like when they're on tippy toes trying to look over, like it's terrible. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. Um, and it wrecks it. So the other thing, there was a lot of other things going on. Um, this sheet of music and this sheet of music, that sheet of music was just as tall as this one. So it's like the piece is just getting wrecked right now. Mm. Um, the wine glass, I remember this vividly. The wine glass was this tall and it like oh, hit yeah, that, yeah, yeah. that, that, that much higher like that. Um, the table, um, as I recall, was like, like maybe that wide. Um, there's just so many things that were just not working. Um, and I was, I was like, you know, what do you, what do I do? Like, I have to go find the right objects. And then I was just like, I'm just going to take license everywhere. And so I put that wine jar on a, on a piece of, um, uh, some like kind of book down here. Mm -hmm. And I popped it up to the height. I wanted to see it. I never got a smaller piece of paper. I just eyeballed it the size I wanted to see it. I cut this guy shorter, like everything I wanted to do, I did it. And the string was never popped like this. Um, I just imagined it like that. And it was really, it was, it was freeing. And I've never gone back ever since as a painter to being enslaved to the thing. But it, it kind of had to be that way because when we first start to learn, if we take too much license, we, um, we're, we're in danger of becoming like mannered painters that really mm -hmm. just paint what we, what we know and what we think rather than learning from nature. So it kind of has to go that way. It's almost like a, a rite of passage <laughs> thing. And so um, I really like, yeah, I really like that change. Um, a few other, a few other thoughts that I have. Oh, you were talking about a very fine uh, drawing and um, the having a highly detailed drawing. And I almost felt like you felt like you were like maybe cheating or being like slavish. But um, if I've ever given that impression, I, I, I apologize because this is my hero right here. This is Soroya uh. painting his wife Clotilde. That is charcoal. And okay. Okay. that is, if you've ever in your whole entire life seen a highly finished work. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, that is highly, highly rendered. And so um, we, we can feel ourselves. I mean, if Soroy is doing that, um, if Soroy is doing that, then you're good to go. Okay. Um, you, you can put in as highly finished a, a charcoal drawing as you want to, you know? Good, good. Yeah, I won't worry about that anymore. <laughs> cool. Yeah, so like, Next, next work that you jump into, um, work out all the problems on earth you want to in a drawing, transpose them onto the canvas. Um, the thing I'd, I'd also say about Soroya is, yes, like he had a solid drawing to work into, but he also delighted in the paint and he enjoyed the flow of light over the surface. And you know what I'm saying? Like he, he, wasn't, um, he wasn't ever enslaved to the drawing in the sense of, he stopped exploring the phenomenon of light or of color, um, but rather it was the template onto which he worked. So that's, that's what I would encourage you to do is go ahead and do like really highly finished drawings and whatever is comfortable for you. Because Charles Cecil, when he taught, he had me do a highly finished portrait drawing, transpose it to canvas and then work into that drawing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So uh, you should feel the freedom of doing that. Um, okay. So, I like the one, two, three of the height differences um, that you have right here. So it goes one, two, three. Yeah. It's kind of like do, re, mi. Um, so that works well. Um, and then what I would say now, going back to that whole idea of the objects talking to each other, um, you, know what, you know what I'll do? I'll do this in a loud color so that you can see um whoops with that loud color back so that you can see um the the shape the shape of this bottle really contrasting it with the shape of and, and i know that you would do this again this isn't a correction but i'm just saying when you do it really pronounce the shape difference between 
the wine bottle and the olive oil bottle. Yes. And yes. I, see, I see what you're saying. Yeah. Like really go to town on that difference. Like I exaggerate differences um, in my work and even like the cap at the top, maybe this could come a little bit wider and the cap at the top um, even has like, it almost feels like a silly, like you ever see those bowler hats that the English wore? Um, not silly, but like uh, there's like a, a little bit of a whimsical like line to it um, mm -hmm. to, to our, <laughs> to our eyes, but it has like that little, like, like flare, like, you know what I mean? Like right down here or okay. the brim of the hat. Like, and so, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so that's, what, that's my other thought. Um, as far, I, I had a thought about um, the, the, the color of, I'm sorry, the, uh, the values of, let me move all the images over to give myself a little bit of room right here. Okay, that's good. Um, so the values of the, the box. So the, the, the box is mm -hmm. a cube. And so we know that's a cube. And one of the things that Robert Beverly Hale talks about in, I believe it's the first chapter of his Drawing Lessons from the Great Masters, is he talks about the importance of establishing value one, two, and three, where if light is coming and hitting the surfaces, so it doesn't really matter, is it coming from this angle or is it a little bit more this angle or, you know what I mean? It doesn't really matter to me. Yeah. But like, we have to call it, the one thing that we ha can't do is, if it hits at a 45 perfectly, um, then if it's hitting here at a 45, then this value and this value are going to be exactly the same. Mm -hmm. um, so what Hale teaches us, he says, give it like, so let's say the light's coming from here, which I feel like your piece is. Right. Um, so then this one's going to be very light. This one's going to be a little bit darker. And then this one's going to be super dark. Yeah. Yeah. R relatively speaking, you know, you, you could, right. you could play, play with that. I don't mean midnight black. <laughs> um, no, I understand. Yeah. So yeah. look at how dimensional my little schematic there looks. Yep. Now let's jump back to your box. Um, I think that I would go a whole lot brighter right here. And uh -huh. then a little bit, a little bit brighter right okay. here. Just a, yeah. just a little bit. Um, you know, allow for the shadow back there, but like something like that. Um, and then over here, um, I would go like, really like much darker like and, and keep the color don't don't go with the color i just did but you know yeah, you can go with a nice yeah, royal yeah, blue okay. um and look at the dimension you just achieved yes um yes. if without really without that's why like i always you know try to say to students where um right now classical realism when it's done wrong which anything can be done wrong um one of the things it's suffering from is that people try to work their way out of like a flat painting or an uninteresting painting by rendering like lots of detail. Mm. But more important than that is understanding. Okay. And un understanding uh, can bring you, um, well, understanding allows us to, with economy, suggest something rather than with overstatement bludgeon people with like so much detail and uh again that's that uh, i'm jumping around with a lot of things but that is the whole idea behind the gettysburg address where yeah. the gettysburg address we all remember <laughs> you know lincoln getting up in five minutes and we still have to remember it in schools but none of us remember poor everett the speaker who came before who pontificated for two and a half hours um because we we don't appreciate we don't appreciate the overstatement. We, yeah. we appreciate succinct understanding. Um, so then jumping over here, um, I love the lane you did for here. And again, these aren't corrections, like uh, this went wrong, uh, so go put it right. N not that whatsoever, but you have this little piece of light right here. Mm -hmm. It's so, so, so successful. This is great, all great stuff. And then I, okay. what I really look forward to is this piece of light right here. That's yeah, yeah. That, that feels That's so cool yeah. right there. 
that that's going to hit there like that bright. You could even put that in with like a palette knife and really put the paint down with like oh. force. Okay. Um, but it, it's your call. You don't, you don't have to use a palette knife, but I'm just saying right, paint right. it with paint. Um, and then I'd even like um, no corrections over here. I'm just looking forward to this could get quite bright over here, putting down the paint with gusto. I'm sorry, where, um, where, where are you going? Uh, right there. Oh, right there. Okay, yes, yes. Yeah. Uh, okay. So I'll go back a few steps and then forward. So watch me put bright paint right there. Oh, yeah. Okay, okay. Yes. And then it yes. catches because the light's coming in. Like, yes. Right. Yes. So it catches like right here. Um, no correction here. It's just the next thing. It goes in between the garlic and the tomato right here. Uh -huh. yeah, yeah, yeah. And then it kind of runs around. And, 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 and I'm not doing a perfect job here. I'm just kind of, because maybe this light is competing with this light. Um, but, but you'll know it when you see it. Like it, yep. it'll, it'll be self-evident. Um, and then I do like the shadow uh, back there. But I, I never know, like I rarely, I rarely go with the shadows as I see them. Uh -huh. um, I, yeah. I make up my shadows. So like maybe instead of this shadow is too much on the level of that shadow. I don't like that. So maybe mm -hmm. I would just go like this and maybe that's sufficient. That might, that might be it for the, for the whole entire background. Maybe not, maybe it'll be more so. And then right back here, those cast shadows coming off the cloth. Um, I like the colors of your uh, cloth way better than the cloth in real life. So like, mm -hmm. well done there. Um, and all I would say is as you put the shadows in, um, where there are deep gradients, like, or where there are gradients that go deeper mm -hmm. and darker, like such as down here. Box, um, yeah. yeah, to like, to pull that out. Mm -hmm. And then use the light trim um, so that you can save the box from disappearing into shadow right there. You know what I mean? Like, and, and I, I'm drawing it too big <laughs> because the trim is really tiny right over here. No, I understand. Um, yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, yeah. Um, the last thought that I have is the, the, the screaming colors, like your greens, like against like your reds are so exciting. Like mm -hmm. it's, it's, that's going to be fun. Um, so like, I would go over here with a uh, Venetian red or Indian red and ivory black and keep it super, super thin and medium right. rich. Okay. Um, and then over here, I'd probably be going with a cadmium red. Like um, that is like a screaming, like brilliant, yeah. like vibrant fire engine red. And I might just to, give this whole idea of this fruitful Italian life. Um, they really do know how to live. I would maybe run with that tomato and I might even make them like a little bit bigger, like maybe yeah, give them yeah, a little, okay. more, a little okay. bit more heft. Okay. Um, and you know, like you could do this. You see how that crops the bottom of the handle? Um, I like that. I like how it just cut off the bottom of the handle right here. And the okay. handle okay. disappears. I see. I see. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, a last thought that I had is maybe um, if you're if you're sizing up uh, this, um, uh, it's it's that is an olive oil dispenser, right? Is that what yes, that is? Yeah, exactly. Um, if you're sizing like like we're talking about sizing it up, so mm -hmm. if you're doing that, I probably would be give a little bit more negative space to the handle and let it disappear even more behind the tomato. Um, so think. like I'd go like, I don't know, I'm just trying to like pull and I, maybe I wouldn't have the shadow, this shadow, maybe I wouldn't let it go behind the handle yet because I want to carve out the back of the olive oil dispenser and then um, maybe let it have a gradient down here where it gets a little bit darker like that. And then you could go like this, which is going to be fun you could pop in this really brilliant highlight right there. That's gonna look cool against the highlight right here on the tomato. And uh, I'm being ridiculously sharp. 
Okay, you're on the handle there, right? The highlight on the handle is what you're talking about. Yep, yep. these highlights yep. right yep. here. Yep, got gotcha. you. Yep. And uh, we, we lead with highlights. Like, so if we have, so I'm just, you can see me now dance all around the piece. And I'm just going to lead the eye, the viewer's eye, around the piece with these little highlights, just mm -hmm. like this. And, you know, it's going to be probably brightest right there. Little highlights here, here, um, there, there. Probably a little one right here on the box. Um, and then uh, jumping over to, again, I mean, these aren't things of like, like, hey, this is wrong. Uh, let's put it right. This is more so like, here's the next step. Like, so I know I keep repeating that, but I do think it's important. Um, my violin teacher, who I'm taking lessons from at the moment, she's she's like a concert level performer. And um, it's really cool because she really reinforces what I've done right so well. And it helps me to pay attention to what's going wrong because I know what's going right. And so like, you really have a piece here where so much is going right. And it's, it's all just like, here's the next step stuff. Yeah. That's um, okay. Yeah. yeah. And then uh, the shadow that you have right here um, coming off of the box is definitely one of my favorite moments in the whole piece right here mm. Mm. where the lights coming behind here, the lights coming in between the spoon. These are really great moments. Um, and I'm just going to go over to black for a moment so that I could um, just show you how you can pump up the garlic right there um, by just going falsely a little bit too dark just right there. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Just a little bit. And on, what on, that does, okay. what that does you're is on, that- on the, on the back edge shoe you're talking about, basically. Yeah, yeah. right, right there. The front, yeah, okay, right there. Okay, I see what you're doing. Yeah. Yes. Yes, so yes. by going just a little bit darker, and then again, yeah. you could say, well, well, why isn't it dark here and it's dark there? I seldom fill in those blanks for my viewers, unless it's so, um, what's the word? Uh, unless it's so obvious that obvious it's- that, that it would be disturbing if you didn't do it. Yeah, yeah, I see. Yeah, yeah. so like, but like, I, I play around with this. Don't, obviously don't go exactly with anything I recommend on a, on a digital screen. Because I, I don't really have uh, you know brushes in my hand that I can't really quite communicate it, mm -hmm. but um, anything you can do to pop up the value of that the light hitting that garlic, uh, because it it is it is pretty dark right here, it hugs it yeah. with like some dark darks, um, but you, again you'll know it when you see it, so you'll be okay. you'll be able to gauge it. And um, the last thought that I have is that the um these posts back here um yeah. i i think the only thing i would i would say is that i would soften them and make it they don't necessarily have to get lighter in value although i am making them lighter in value so that mm -hmm. i can soften them um but they the transitions like the sharps to my eye are kind of overpowering okay the they're kind of overpowering the um the 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 they're advancing beyond the sharps all through here like these are these are our stars right here yeah so this is where we want all of our sharps to be um i'm not saying a background can never have sharps because i mean i just did a painting of that fellow josh bellinger um with the abstract background uh i, I don't know if you remember that piece um, it was at the Long Island Museums. Yeah, sure do. Um, yes, of course. Yeah, yeah. So I, when I did that piece, I, I played around. The, the game was I made the background sharp, and he was somewhat soft. So you know that there are rules, and then we break them. But I feel in this piece that this wants to become super, super soft, mm, okay. like like impossibly soft, like almost where, almost where, like it's contrived you could always make it sharper but um now as i go back into this and i chew away at either side um again forgive the imperfect uh computer program uh or my handling of the of the program um 
so you see how this is getting softer and softer. Yeah. And um, it's there, but it's not advancing. And so it's, it's there, but it's like somewhat yeah. retreating. Yeah. Okay. Um, okay. I, and then, I, I do that with the paint by, by basically um, just, uh, I guess, making it lighter and, and, uh, and yeah. Yeah. It, it's kind of like um, the, the way that I get that, like, let's say there's already, there's already paint down. So, um, you know what, I'll, I'll just draw from the colors that are there. Um, so if you put down uh, a band of, let's say a brown right here, and then another side, we'll just say that it's, it's a cream, it's, it's an off-white. And let's say it, got, it, got, it gets really sharp. So let me go with a sharp brush. Um, so right here. So, all right, so now let's put down a band that's very sharp and then surround it on either side. So if you have that on an oil canvas right mm -hmm. there, and bone dry, what you have to do is you have to reapply all the paint fresh, or you have to scrub it with steel wool and turpentine. You don't need to do that because there's, there's very little paint down. Um, yeah. Steel wool, you know, you really should, it's a good idea to use steel wool when like it's the point of no return. You right. really gotta <laughs> take it back. Okay. But um, okay. so watch, watch me feather. So you can get the paint fresh here again, mm -hmm. and I'm feathering into that brown. Ah, um, okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. And just going right into it like that, and then I'm gonna get the brown out, and then this is with a soft brush. I'm gonna feather back in to the light, ah. and then once I've done that. I'm going to go back to the off white and I'm going to feather back in and feather back in. So like I'll keep doing this sometimes five times, 20 times so until it's, it's like, it when, was, it's like blending shadow, the shadows, right? If in a, in a way, uh, totally. Yep. And the, the dance is this, if you let too much white paint into that Brown, mm -hmm. um, you, you lose it because the, the, the titanium is chalky. And it, it kills the chroma, it kills the color. Okay. Um, and you'll get like these nasty looking skeletal, like ghost-like things. So you gotta, it's a dance where you gotta keep, I would say to do this, you have three brushes. You have a wet off-white brush, you have a wet brown brush, and you have, and those both are sables. And then you have one other sable that's probably bigger than the other two. Um, mm -hmm. And it's bone dry. And mm. you apply the paint with the wet ones. You can go back and forth and dance, but you mm. want to make sure you don't get too much white into that brown. And this okay. goes with any colors, obviously. But then you get the bone dry brush, and you very carefully feather, and you keep wiping it off with the paper towel um, so that as you feather it, the color of the white doesn't get into the brown um, so that you're keeping your pigment mm. really, really, uh, or the brown really clean. It, you know, it there's definitely going to be overlap, but you just got to control it, you know? Yep. 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 So, uh, yeah, that's actually, you're, you're on a fantastic uh, path here. Like, okay, thanks. thanks Kevin. Yeah. I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to replay this, this video many, several times because there's a lot of information you've given me that I've got to, uh, got to, got to process. By the way, one last question yeah. with, with Steve, that, that gray, you know, that gray I have in the front there, um, uh, is that, you, for the time being, should I just leave that, or do you feel that's a, that's an appropriate that's a, that color is okay? Or I like it better than I like it better than the photo. Um, the I photo, like yeah, because there wasn't enough contrast. So yeah, okay, good. Yeah, like, All right, your your shadows are are nicer colors um, on the tabletop than than the photograph, mm -hmm. and I, I really I, you know applaud you on that decision. And then um, I've been getting a very nice gray. I I, I learned so much from uh, Mark D'Alessio where his plain air palette, I've been importing it into my work that I'm doing really like, especially the portrait of my son, Liam, where when I needed to get a gray, um, I didn't mix black and white. Um, I mix cobalt blue and cadmium orange. And hmm. depending on how much you put in. So if you just put straight cobalt with straight cadmium orange, 
you could skew it way more towards like a blue gray or way more towards like the like this like hot gray and then you add white just a touch of white into it and it chills it out like it takes out the chroma um so you can really play with it and you get these beautiful like purpley grays um so i've been having a lot of fun with that and it's really changed my like like that that right there that gray is just you know like let's call it gray that that's pretty bland and boring pretty blah, but, yeah. <laughs> but that that is more pleasant okay and uh as you're doing all these uh shadows um just using this idea right here um of the soft transitions and here, here's like a perfect case in point where you take this and whoops you go like this and you kind of work into there with really soft transitions and i, I don't want to get rid of the shadow and we'll just go like this and then you go back in and you pull this into the light. Mm -hmm. Just like that. And so now when you've done that sufficiently, then what you do is you go back again and you get the light and you pull back into the shadow. So it's this back forth, back forth, back forth. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Yeah, yeah, you get that fine. Yes, yes, the fine feathering of the, the, what the what actual shadow does, yeah. Yeah, and then when you get to the, um, like to here, then you, you leave that like razor sharp um, right there. And you, you let the, the handle of that be like super, super sharp mm -hmm. against the, the surface. And then uh, right, at the, right at the base of right here, you can go even you can go actually pretty sharp at the origin point of a shadow right there. But then you want to quickly taper uh, yeah. it out. Okay. okay. And have you and I looked at the Da Vinci um, drawing together? Of uh, tur turbulence? No. Okay, let me uh, quickly pull that up for you so that you can, um, you can see that. Um, might take me a minute. Um, yeah, it's going to take me a minute. I'm just going to scroll through some of my images I'm on my phone here. Um, and it's interesting because Da Vinci's drawing of water is a great, great reference point when if, if water is traveling in waves, um, light travels in waves. And if water hits what we'll call an impediment, um, an obstruction, um, we, and I think it we, forms. We, talked, we talked about this. Yeah, okay. Yeah, I remember yeah. we talked about it, but we didn't actually look at it. it yeah, wow. So this is a, a great drawing. And, and I use it, like personally, like I use it for um, for light. I, I don't even know if Da Vinci intended it for light. But um, you know what I'll do? I'm going to make this, um, I'm going to make this bigger. I'm going to just over overrun uh where do i want to put this guy you know i'll put it here for the time being then i'll see if i can um so the way that light you see that the way that the water is striking the obstruction with the greatest force um mm -hmm. right here so it comes in with the greatest force and then it as it tries to like pass around it where yeah. it, it, can't, it can't reach is where the little eddies are formed. Eddie, yep. and, then, yeah. and then further beyond with the study of turbulence, um, there is a rejoining and the, you know, the, the negative displacement right here is far less severe until you'd go further downstream and not really even be able to trace it. Yeah. Um, so this little rip curl right here to a painter is kind of like a highlight. Um, mm -hmm. That's where the highlight would be because the light is striking with the greatest force. So let's again, think of your spoon um, sitting there. So light is hitting the spoon. That's the obstruction. 
where the light yeah, cannot yeah, reach yeah, yeah. is is the shadow so like it seems so obvious that that it's like well you know why are we talking about it? it's so obvious but like i do think as painters it's really beneficial for us to dwell on the fact that like okay where um where shadows are the strongest is simply where light can't reach and it'll also be the sharpest because the distinction is greatest right there but then it quickly peters off and the light is able to rejoin mm. once mm. it goes around like that you know what i mean like yep and and then by here it's so it's really diffuse so that's why shadows are sharpest at the base yes and darkest uh, i'm overseeing that shadow it's way too dark <laughs> Um, no, no, I, but 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 yeah, I, I see what you I absolutely see I absolutely see where you, where, 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 where you're coming from. Yeah, that, that makes a lot. Yeah, of sense. and so uh, yeah, I guess you know for the for the JPEG image I'm going to send you, uh, you don't need the image of your own work necessarily. So um, maybe I'll I'll do this. This is even better yet. I will put that image. You don't right. need that. Well, point. Yeah, it's great. Yep. Yep. Yeah, okay. and yeah, you don't need that. So All cool. Right. Um, well. Sorry, I hope I'm not being rude. Um, I have to jump over to Lewis right now. Sure, of course. Yeah, yeah. No, thanks. Thanks, Kevin. And uh, I'll, 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 I'll see you in two, well, we'll, we'll do it again in two weeks, right? Wonderful. Yep, two weeks. Um, okay. And cool. then, uh, yeah, if, oh, um, you had asked if uh, texting or emailing is better. Um, emailing is only better just because um, it's easy for me to keep tabs on who I have replied to and have not, whereas a text, Somehow oh, gets lost okay. during okay. the day. I will, I will email um, from now on. Yeah, you want you but, want to email this this. What you don't you don't need me to email what I just sent you or, I mean what I sent you for today or, or do you want me? To oh email oh no no yeah. I I just okay. mean in the future like always like feel free to text me like you could text yes. me you know just say hey do we have something going on to like text me right. for whatever right. reason, right. Right. but uh with the images um it's a little bit easier in email because then I I check my email. I'm like, oh, John wrote to me and he sent me all the images. Like, so I, I have everything. It's, it's just sure. how I organize my workflow. So. Okay, we'll do it, Kevin. Definitely. Cool. Thanks a lot. I know. Yeah. I know you gotta go. You gotta go <laughs> talk to Lewis. So, uh, thanks. Thanks again. It was very, very good. Enjoyed it. Yeah. I. Uh, it, it's really nice because the momentum that you have is just gaining, and um, mm -hmm. today was fun. Today was like. Today was a really. Today is a day where you, you're starting to dance. <laughs> you know what I mean? You're not thinking left foot, right foot. Do I do this? Do I do that? You're you're starting to feel the melody. You're like, it's, it's cool. It's really cool. Okay, so, great. Cool, All right, John. Kevin. Take All right care. so I'll, I'll send this off to you. Bye. All right. Thanks. Yeah. Bye.